Hey guys, this is MacHeads101, and today I'm going to be comparing the speed of seven different programming languages and sharing my results with you. So to do this, I've written three different programs, and I've written them in seven different languages, pretty much identically, and I've run them, timed how long they take to run, and I'm going to share the results and uh, explain, you know, justify what I find, and hopefully it'll give you a good idea of how fast different programming languages do different things. So. I'm just going to go through all three programs and briefly explain what they do and then review the times and if you want to see more you can go to this github repository it has all the information it has the list of languages that I used it has um, the list of ways that I run the languages because that's very important for instance I run Swift I'm using Xcode 6 Pre-V3 for, for uh, Python I'm using Python 3 and Python 2 for JavaScript I'm using Google's V8 engine so it'll be important to look at this github repository if you have uh, critiques or anything like that uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what I found so this first benchmark is essentially a really simple program where it just takes two command line arguments and here's the Python one you, so you can see you give it the size of an array and you give it a number of iterations and it makes an array that's an array of integers starting with 0, 1, 2, 3, etc uh, going up to n minus 1 where n is the size and then what it does is it just reverses that array uh, you know a certain number of times that you specify and it just reverses it by swapping the first and last values second and second to last values third and third to last values etc so you're just timing how long it takes to flip an array and the thing is it takes very little time to flip an array usually so you want to maybe do it 10,000 times or something like that so that you can time it and get an accurate result that's a couple of seconds so that there's not big biases or influence from your computer heating up or whoops your computer heating up or you know whatever happened so I'm gonna go ahead now and uh, show you the results so that was the source code in Python just so you got an idea of what the program did I was actually very surprised that Java was the fastest of all these uh, benchmarks that I ran that just flipped an array and uh, I'm not sure why it was the fastest Maybe it did some kind of uh, optimization for CPU cache lines, uh, but whatever it did, somehow it managed to make itself faster than C, even when I ran C with the uh, highest level of optimization in Clang. So I'm not sure how that happened, but somehow in this particular test, Java was faster than C. Don't worry, the other two, Java is not faster than C, uh, so you don't have to attack me in the comments yet. But in this case, I just happened to find that Java was faster than C. If you want to, you know, download this and try it yourself or see what's going on, um, huh, see what's going on, yeah. No, but uh, if you want to check out why that happened, go ahead, and if you figure it out, please leave a comment. Not entirely sure. You can see that C is actually listed here four times. That's just with the four different optimization levels. So dash O0 is no optimization, O1 is a bit, O2 is even more, and O3 is the most. In this case, these three didn't make too much of a difference. Uh, 03 was pl pretty close to 01, but when you really have no optimization, it makes it a lot slower. So we have Java C, then we have Dart and JavaScript. And Dart and JavaScript are almost neck and neck. Dart is significantly, you know, moderately better. Um, something to know about Dart and JavaScript is I'm using V8 to run JavaScript, and I'm using the Dart VM to run Dart. Uh, these two engines were written by basically the same team at Google. So the reason why Dart is faster isn't that a better team wrote it or more money was put into it. It's actually just that uh, it turns out that because Dart is, you know, has static typing and more structure, it actually is able to be uh, made faster and more optimized. So that is why JavaScript is a little slower. It's actually pretty impressive JavaScript got this fast because arrays in JavaScript are untyped and can have all this nonsense. Uh, but actually, unoptimized C is slower than both JavaScript and Dart, so if you just compiled this just in terminal with no optimization arguments or anything you would actually find that the equivalent JavaScript program would be faster and you tend to see this a lot in the real world maybe not in these benchmarks but uh, this is pretty common that unoptimized C is slower than JavaScript here we have Swift which is significantly slower than all of the ones I've gone over so far um, now this is fully optimized Swift with the highest level of optimization in Xcode um, both from LLVM and Swift specific optimizations. So uh, why is it so slow? Maybe it's because Apple just changed the way arrays work in Swift and uh, they haven't optimized for it yet. I don't know, but you can certainly look into that too. 
And then Ruby and both versions of Python are pretty much the same speed and they are much slower. I think they're like 380 times slower than the fastest one, which is Java. So uh, if you're trying to reverse an array really fast, don't use Ruby or Python. So that's the lesson you should learn from this. Now let's talk about the next benchmark, which does a little bit less. It's not as useful, but essentially what it does is uh, I have one function which sums up all the numbers from 1 to n, so it does 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, etc. Then it um, has another method which calls that method uh, n times and basically adds up each result and then averages it with the, the last average. So it, it, I call it a rolling average, it's not really a rolling average, it's, I don't know what it is, it's not useful for sure, but what it does do is it makes, uh, it forces basically the program to call add up to, you know, n times, and add up to does something n times, so in the end it ends up taking n squared time to run this program. So this program is essentially just seeing how fast the programming language calls functions and how fast it does basic arithmetic. And the results are going to be shocking, I'm warning you now. I will explain why they're so weird in a moment, but here let's go ahead and look at these. So you can see right now that C took something like, um, well, oh, I mean this is a difference of probably about 10,000 um, between optimized C and Python, maybe more. Maybe it's 100,000. Either way, I found that all these, these right here, from C to Swift to Java, were ridiculously fast compared to these other ones, disproportionately fast. So Dart versus Java, like they're the closest ones between this boundary, and uh, it's, it's a factor of 20. So the question is, how come these five languages were faster than these other ones? And the reason is, at least for C and Swift, I know for sure, I think Java did something very similar, is what they did was they looked at, and I'll go back to this code, they looked at this method that adds up all the numbers from 1 to n, uh, and it changed it from adding each number to just n times n plus 1 over 2, which is a formula. If you haven't learned it, that's fine. That formula gives you uh, the exact sum from 1 to n, and it's much faster than adding up all the numbers. So that changes the entire thing. I think I said here from uh, O n squared to just O of n. So it makes it way faster. You know, the bigger the number I put in, the faster it will be relative to the other one. So uh, it's, it's kind of an unfair comparison, but at the same time, it's a very fair comparison because it shows that the C optimizer, you know, Clang, and um, Clang also compiles Swift, so it got the same optimization. And how the Java optimizer actually were able to recognize something I was doing inefficiently. That's a pretty intelligent thing to recognize and make it faster. It's a very specific example and it still did it. So I was highly impressed by this. Now, these other languages did not notice that. Um, so Dart, without noticing that, ran at uh, a lot faster than JavaScript in this case, probably once again, because Dart is uh, statically typed. Unoptimized C, of course, didn't, uh, because I didn't have the optimization on it, didn't use that formula, so it's even slower than JavaScript, like I said before, that tends to happen a lot. And then Ruby and Python are even slower. So Ruby is actually a lot faster than Python in this case. That tends to be the case, that Ruby is faster than Python, um, although in the last example they were about the same speed because it was a simpler test. Uh, but you can see the difference here is pretty big. And Python 2 in this case is actually slower than Python 3. I have these in the wrong order and I'll switch them after I make this video. But anyway, there's, that's, that's basically the results and that's an explanation of why these are so much faster, which is pretty cool. It's cool that we have that kind of like artificial intelligence. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and look at the final uh, benchmark. So this one was a real pain to write. That's why you can see this commit message, just one more to go, oh God. Yeah, that's because I was suffering while writing these. Um, what it is, is, and I'll show you one that doesn't have a lot of compiled crap. Here's the Ruby one. It has a vector class, um, which has an X and a Y component, and you can add vectors and scale them and whatever. It has a particle class, which has a location, a velocity, a mass, and uh, uh, basically this program uses these two classes to emulate two samely charged particles, um, just next to each other and emulate what happens as they get repelled apart. 
So as they get repelled apart, the force diminishes. If you're familiar with physics, it's an inverse square relationship. Anyway, this isn't the most efficient way to do any of this, but uh, I did it exactly the same way in all of them. And basically all of the programs uh, involve creating vector objects all over the place, multiplying vectors by scalars, adding vectors, you know, physics stuff. So it's stuff that would probably have been better done with OpenCL, and I probably could have gotten an even better result then, but uh, this is what I got just using the processor. And uh, as you can see, what happens is I did basically, uh, it's an approximation, and I did 5 million samples, and between each sample, this amount of time is allowed to pass. So let's have a look at the results. Here we see that, surprisingly, um, C with less optimization is faster, or C++ in this case, is faster than C with a little more. Uh, that's just because these are probably the exact same program and there's a slight fluctuation because your computer's doing different things or the, the OS schedules it differently. So I'm pretty sure that these were about the same. It just happened that these were the times I got, so I had to put them on there in the wrong order, but whatever. Java was um, faster than Dash 01 or Dash 0 C++, but it was slower than the fully optimized C++ by a decent amount. Uh, and that's probably because when I used C++, I used something called stack allocation, uh, which is a lot faster than what I assume Java uses, which is heap allocation. So, and maybe Java is smart enough to optimize it. In fact, it probably, in order to get this time, it probably has to be. It probably used some stack allocation too, or it didn't even use allocation at all. Um, but that would explain why Java did a little worse than C++ in this case, is because creating new objects in Java might be a little more expensive. Now Swift is, like fully optimized Swift is still slower than non-optimized C++, you know, completely unoptimized. This is probably because Swift has an expensive object system with reference counting, um, and I might not have done it the best way in Swift because I'm not familiar with Swift, to be honest, but I think I did a pretty good job. So. If you want to look at my Swift code, go right ahead. Um, like I said, I think this repository will have a link in the description. Now, JavaScript is actually like twice as slow as Swift, which, uh, you know, a little bit bothering, but whatever. Um, so JavaScript object creation, garbage collection is a little more expensive. And Dart, I was surprised to see that Dart was actually slower than JavaScript in this case. Um, and I, I, yeah, that's a pretty consistent result with this particular object-oriented test. And it makes me believe that perhaps because Dart is still not like fully developed, um, they haven't gotten around to optimizing the memory management the same way. That's, that's probably what it is. Maybe I just did something stupid in Dart too, uh, but I doubt it because this is a significant difference. And now, of course, we have the usual slow guys. Ruby, I mean, Python is... Really, Python 3, I mean, let's look at, compare this time to the optimized C, like, how do you even make a programming language 465 times slower than C++? I mean, you have to work pretty hard to make it so bad, but whatever, I'm sure lots of you like Python. Because of just these results, just these findings alone, I don't like Python that much anymore. I mean, look at how much slower, even than Ruby, I mean, Ruby manages, Ruby is also the same kind of scripting language with, like, very little, I don't know, maybe it has a little more external work going on to make it faster, but still, it's even twice as fast as Python, so uh, whatever. And I'm sure a lot of you are going to yell at me in the comments for trashing Python, but really, like 400 times slower than optimized C++. Great. But anyway, I was pretty impressed by V8 throughout this entire thing. JavaScript it did a very impressive job for what it is. Um, so this was a video just comparing the speeds of languages. I think I did it pretty objectively. Um, if you want to see an, a language added, go ahead and leave a comment. If you want me to change a test, you can make a pull request or file an issue on this GitHub repository if you, if you use GitHub, or just leave a comment, whatever. So uh, thanks for watching MacCats 101. Subscribe, and goodbye.